Hello and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I want to show you a comparison of three different ways of getting sharp corners with hard surface forms in Blender when we're modeling. So these three methods are creases, edge splits, and proximity loops. So let's look at the first one which is creases. So selecting the model here, let's just zoom right in on it. You can see that I have this shape, all the shapes are identical, and it looks all right, except that we've got some surface shading that's kind of weird, but the overall form is nice. We've got a subdivision surface modifier at level two. If we go into edit mode, we can see that we have very, very simple geometry. You know, it's just the pure faces. And so this works very well. We've got these creases, which we can set creases. If we select an edge, hit in to bring up our properties panel and adjust the crease setting right here. So we can go from zero to one. And just as a good example, let's take a look at say this edge. And so if we in here set this to zero, you can see that top becomes really nice and rounded. Setting it to one creates it nice and sharp. You can also adjust creases by selecting your edge and hitting shift E and then going from zero to one as well. So these are all fine and dandy, but you'll notice that in object mode, we've got pretty nasty shading. You know, these corners definitely show off. And if we look at our actual mesh, you know, if I turn off optimal display, that's a fairly decent geometry density for this shape. You know, it shouldn't be much more complex than that. You know, it's nice that this is really simple, but the shading is not good. And this shading is going to show up at render time. You know, we're going to see these kind of blurred edges. It's just not going to look very good. We can get around that by just increasing the number of subdivisions within our modifier. So if we go all the way up to say five, then it starts looking really nice. You know, the higher we go, the nicer it gets. There it just looks really crisp and clean and it's really very nice. But we've also made our mesh just incredibly dense where suddenly we have all of these edges in these other areas that maybe we don't need. So Probably the best way to do this would simply be use a low subdivision count, say two in the viewport, and then set your render time all the way to six. But so that way it'll still look good at render time, but you're gonna have a lot of geometry in there. So in my personal opinion, this is not an optimal solution. So let's look at number two. So number two uses an edge split modifier combined with the subdivision surfaces. So first, let's just turn these off one at a time. So first we have our mesh. And on that mesh, we have set creases just like we did here. And the creases work to give us these sharp corners when we add the sub Ds. But then we want to clean up the shading here. And this is where then the edge split modifier comes into place. So we turn this on and now it becomes really crisp and clean because we've set it to work on sharp edges. So anything that's been marked sharp will then be split. So if I turn this off, you can see that we actually lose our shading. And this is because we actually have an, another set of edge tag that's been set on this beyond just the creasing, and that is the edge sharp. So if I turn off creases here in the mesh display, turn off creases, you can see that I also have sharp edges. So these edges are done by the same way. You just select the edges, and then you simply hit sh Control E to bring up your edges menu, and you click mark sharp. So this way you can custom define which edges are going to be fed into the edge split modifier and then it literally actually splits these edges apart. So if I were to apply all these modifiers, which I'll do just real quick here, you'll see that these edges are not actually connected. And so this is not such a bad thing, so that's one way to do it. But what you'll notice is now it becomes very, very crisp. And since nothing in nature has a truly 100% sharp edge, this may not be what you're wanting. This is, this is really good for creating things like knife blades where you need that razor, razor thin edge that you're never gonna know uh, is not perfectly sharp. And so it works great for things like that, or it also works good for simple objects. But if you're say creating a nice detail, you know, if this is a really clean hard surface form, you're gonna want a nice little chamfered edge or something along this, this which you could do with some more complex modeling with the edge split. But let's move on to the third example, which lends the most geometry, but gives you the most control. And this is using proximity loops. These will also be called bounding edges, detail loops. Uh, they're called all kinds of different things. But the point is, if you look into edit mode, we have our original geometry, which are basically, you know, these outside loops. And then we have supporting edge loops around each corner that then pull the mesh together, creating a nice sharp edge. So for example, if we go in here and look at this one, let me just turn this off. Oops, not that one, this one. If we look at this center edge, if I just double tap G, slide this down, and maybe I'll slide this one down as well, you can see I can round out that form. 
or I can go ahead and sharpen it back up. So this gives me very, very clean control and fine control within the actual geometry to define how sharp my edges are. So this works really well for doing all kinds of things because you could put say a flat edge right here, just like this, you know, coming all the way down there, or you could put a nice beveled round edge. You could do some kind of cool like cornicing where you've got maybe a sharp edge, a rounded form and another sharp edge, you know, like you, you might have around like corner trim in a house. There's all kinds of things that you can do with this, but it does lend you more geometry. You know, if you compare the geometry here that you're actively working with to the geometry here, it's much more. However, if you look at the end result, this is much cleaner than either of these. So this one gives you nice, clean, very, very minimal geometry unless you increase the subdivisions. This one allows you to again work with a very minimal geometry but gives you 100% sharp edge, edges. You know, anything that's split will be 100% sharp. And then the proximity loops give you really clean forms that allow you to get any amount of sharpness either from almost 100% perfectly, you know, you won't get 100%, but you can get almost perfectly sharp to as rounded as you want. So the proximity loops are gonna give you the most flexibility, but also require the most original geometry. So each of these have their own unique purposes. And for me, in my own workflow, I use them consecutively for different things. For example, for a very small object that's gonna be far away from the camera, I might use edge splitting because it's not gonna be seen a whole lot and you're just not gonna see it as much. I might also combine it with say some solid faces. So right now everything is set to smooth shading, but if I were to say select all this, all these flat edges, hit W and shade flat, then that's gonna get a little bit nicer. Now I can't really shade these flat though because then suddenly these edges show up. So there are some things that you can do to combine it even further. I might use the edge split modifier on say a game model, a game ready model, where I want to clearly define the surface change between two different forms. You know, so if you have, if you have a sharp edge, by using that split right around where that seam is, then you're gonna have a very clear definition in the change in the surface. And then for these, or for any high resolution model with clean detail, something that might be seen close to the camera or that needs to have really clean surfaces with very good control over the way that the surface shading works, then I will use proximity loops or supporting edges, whatever you want to call them for creating my high resolution geometry. So those are a couple of different options. Uh, again, they each have their place and uh, time and place. Use them as you will. Just be sure that you understand the differences between how each one can affect it when you're moving on to the rest of the process.